Hello everyone and welcome back. If you're new here, feel free to check out my website, suspiciousTumbleweed.com. There you'll find my past projects, past commissions, a store and an info section will get you all up to speed on the kind of work that I do here on this channel. In this video today, we're going to be working on Ozin from an anime called Made in Abyss. This was a commission. Unfortunately, we're only going to be doing the sewing part, so if you're here for any of the fabrication parts, it wasn't part of the commission. So in this case, the video is going to include the shirt, the cape, and the pouches primarily. I find pouches are very important, especially if you go to cons, because it's no fun wearing a cosplay and having to carry on a purse or a backpack, so do stay tuned for that if you want to make your convention experience a little bit better. Now this footage is from a while ago, so forgive the decor, hair, and tattoo changes. The pattern I'm making on my dress form with clear wrap and duct tape. I cut the sectioned parts off and now I'm tracing the individual parts to clean brown paper and adding seam allowances. I mostly just eyeball these. These right here are the applique details. One of them gets cut out from the burgundy corduroy and the other out of a grey faux leather. The main fabric for the outer layer is this nice black suede. I'm double checking my pattern to make sure the ends of my seams arrive at the correct spot. A mixture of pins and clamps are being used to secure the curved parts. Then it's seamed together. To make the seam more structural and more detailed, I'm pushing the excess to one side and sewing it evenly. For the appliques, I'm using a temporary spray adhesive to hold them into place. I don't fully trust that though, so I'm zigzag stitching them into place afterwards too. Now to turn edges in single fold bias tape. I'm cutting the length of the tape laying the other piece on top. I'm marking the angle at which I need to sew and then heading over to my sewing machine. Seam allowance is also trimmed off. Everything was pinned to the borders of the applique and sewn carefully along the edge. Before closing up the rest of the main layer, I'm making some adjustments to the fit of the lining. To make piping, I cut a strip of fabric and I'm using the zipper foot to sew the casing shut around a thin piece of rope. I'm basting it to the edge of the shirt closer to the outer edge just to hold it properly in place. This way it won't slip around when I sew it later. Before adding the lining, I'm sewing on this detail piece to the back to avoid having stitching show through the lining. This used the exact same techniques as earlier for turning corners in bias tape and sewing them evenly along the edge. Now I can clamp the lining to the outer layer. Switching the thread from grey to black and switching the foot to a zipper foot once again. Now I can sew as close to the piping as possible and once it's sewn I can turn it inside out through I believe was the armholes. To secure everything nice and flat I like to sew along the edge evenly. Time to secure the sleeves now. I'm seaming together the lining and the outer layer and then ironing the seam allowances open. This thing I'm using right here is called a sleeve board by the way. I decided I'm going to connect the cuff of the sleeve first to avoid raw edges there since I'm doing some hand sewing at the armhole to hide the raw edges. This is called a herringbone stitch, I, I know it's hard to see. For the decorative cuffs on the shirt, I'm sewing together some rectangles and turning them inside out. I'm sewing around most of the way, but leaving an opening, that way it actually can be turned inside out. It'll be closed later on. They also get hand sewn to the edge, similar to when I made the Persona jacket in my last video. The cuffs also get buttons on both sides and sewn all together at once. Ozen has a little chain that hangs from her shirt, so I'm sewing on a nylon strap with a D-ring on the inside. For the buttonholes, I'm using a buttonhole foot with my sewing machine, seam ripping them open and using fray stop to prevent the excess threads from fraying. I was lucky enough to find these red and black buttons surprisingly close to the reference images, so now I'm sewing them on to the other side. Now if only one could be so lucky every time one is making a cosplay with material choices, buttons, anything, we'd be in a better place. Alright, now onto the cape. The pattern I made with a mix of clear wrap, duct tape, and paper. 
Some parts will need a dart in order to curve properly over the shoulder. The dart gets traced from the pattern with chalk and sewn carefully along the traced line. More bits and pieces are sewn and turned inside out too. I want the detail on the cape to match up with the one on the shirt, so I'm patterning it here. The different pieces of the cape get seamed together and all seam allowances secured the same way as the ones on the shirt. I'm skipping some of these repeated techniques since we covered them earlier. Pinning these to the cape isn't easy since they need to match up on both sides. But with a lot of measuring, I can finally sew them on. The cape and the lining has piping all the way around just like the shirt too, but this time turned inside out at the collar. These bits right here are going to eventually go over the shoulder. And of course, I'm also securing the edge on the flappy part of the cape. Lots of layers, but the techniques are all the same. I'm hand sewing the flappy part to the edge of the bias tape before placing and securing the shoulder strap. And some more edge securing. A trick I like to do if my faux leather is gripping to the presser foot is spread a bit of water where I'm about to sew. This just helps it glide along. The collar is going to be interfaced to help with stiffness and yes, will also include piping. Just in case you're wondering, the interfacing I'm using here is in fact iron-on. Now to avoid a bulky seam allowance, I'm sewing it directly on and cleaning the raw edges up with some more single fold bias tape and a herringbone stitch. Once the buttons are sewn on, the cape is done. Moving on to the pouches and the belt. I want the belt to become wider, so I'm tracing it onto a rectangle. Black piping is being basted to the first layer of the belt and the other layer has some interfacing. The D-rings are secured to the edge and now moving on to the pouches. Here's a genius clip of myself noticing that that is not what that's supposed to look like and then realizing that the iron wasn't plugged in. Lining layers of the pouches have interfacing for more stiffness and structure. Is there piping in there? The edges for the lining are sewn as well as the edges for the outer layer. Then they can be connected and turned inside out to one another. Yeah, I think there is piping in there. Once turned inside out, I only need to add bias tape to the raw edges at the opening. Carefully positioning the pouches onto the belt permanently and sewing them on. I didn't cover much of the glove detail parts since this video is primarily about sewing, but they were plasti dip and heat shaped before using B7000 to connect them to the gloves. And there we have it all done on the dress form. Thank you so much for watching! If you want to watch these things get made live, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash suspiciousTumble. And if you guys are into the whole Discord thing, there's a link to that underneath the player as well. If you've made a similar costume, or if you followed this video while making this exact same costume, I would really love to see what you've made. With that said, here are the Twitch and Patreon shoutouts. Your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much! 
I will be working on revamping the reward system for those things very soon. I do apologize for the delay. And of course, once again, I'm so sorry for the weird time jumps between videos, the decor changes, my hair changes, tattoos that vanish and reappear. Um, I'm still getting caught up on all the backlog of stuff. Things are very busy, especially with the pandemics kind of derailed everything. So hopefully eventually we'll catch up and everything will look a little bit more up to date. So thank you so much for watching guys and until next time.